What's up guys, Sean the Bro here. Today we're going to be doing the level select section of the fighting game tutorial, which will basically make it so like our character selection, uh, character selection screen, if I could talk, would be able to select your option with either the mouse or the enter key and the level you want. There we go. You see it in action there. And of course my mutant doesn't have any animation still, I need to update that, but uh, you know, I've been extremely busy. So anyway, let's get into making this work though. So, the best way to do this, or at least the easiest way to do this in my opinion, is like the character select screen, and if you're not familiar with that episode, you can watch it here. I'll put in an icon in the top right corner. Basically make a widget. And just call it level select screen and I set it up the exact same way so I actually duplicated the character select screen and just changed the names on everything. So what we're doing here is basically uh, to get a little bit more in depth especially for those that haven't seen the character select screen. Uh, there's a bunch of canvases here they're more for just separate things that I was doing you don't need to divide it up this way but these boxes are essentially a picture right here, an image with a button behind it. So you can press the button. Next episode, I'll probably do some more UI work to make it so you can click the image. Cause right now you technically have to click behind the image if you're using the mouse. And I don't really like that too much, uh, but I did that for a reason and I will get into that next episode. So for now, I just have a button and an image that are separate and they're gonna stay that way. But you could uh, give the button the image and or you could make the image work as a button. You can do a bunch of different ways. This is just what I chose to do for now. But basically, just go in here and go to user interface widget, which I know gets cut off, but it's the very bottom option. Make one, set it up however you want, put your pictures in, take your pictures of your different levels. Then, in the graph, all we do is we construct on an event construct. We use the button that we press, for example, level one, and give it focus. So if you're using the keyboard or a controller even, you wanna give focus so that the first option that we have is the option that is selected uh, when the user is using their controller. So if they don't have a mouse, they can't go select one. They should start on the first instance, which in this case is the training level over here. Then all you do is if you click on the buttons themselves, you can scroll down in the details panel in the designer view and you have events. You have on clicked and on pressed. I recommend using on press because press will work for clicks and enter, things like that. On clicked uh, mainly works for clicking with your mouse. I believe it will work for button presses as well, but I've always been told to use on pressed, especially at work and things like that. So I'd suggest just doing that. This should handle all your cases. And literally, just it'll generate this event for you. All you have to do is go ahead and use the open level node and give it the level name. And now I'll go through making uh, different levels. All right, so after you're done, now we need to actually make the levels. So you should have one level if you've been following this tutorial especially. You will have the training room level, or excuse me, that's the new one I made. You will have one in side scroller CPP maps. You'll have the side scroller example map. It should look something like this. You might have changed it up a bit. And depending on the version of Unreal you have, uh, some of them are slightly different. So that's fine. But it'll look something like this. And then what you can do if you want this map, but just to change a few things, you can right click and duplicate it. That's what I did. And then I just copied it over to a folder I have called levels, called it training room, and just changed the materials. I picked the ugliest colors I could find, that way I know it's not the same as the other map, <laughs> that way I know the functionality is actually working. And there you go. So that part of it's simple. We're going to do a little bit more. Let's talk about how to actually navigate to the training room level, or the, excuse me, the level select level slash widget. So if you were following from the character select widget, then you'll know that we already made a main menu level. If not, go ahead and add new and add a new level. It'll just be a black screen like this. I already have mine, so I won't do it. Call it main menu or whatever you want to call it. And 
for testing purposes, we'll make it, you know, a little bit fancier as the series goes on. But for testing purposes, if you go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint, you actually have an Event Begin Play. You can go ahead and create your Character Selection widget and add it to Viewport. If you're doing Character Select and Level Select, then all you have to do is come out of your level, uh, your level Blueprint, go to your Character Select screen, or whatever screen is going to preface your level select screen, go to the graph. When you've made your selection, which is right here, and you've changed your character class and all that, then you can go ahead and create the level select widget and add it to viewport. You should also destroy the character select widget. I haven't done that yet because I want the option to go back. So for example, if you're in the character select screen right now, you can press something but you can never go back to the character select screen. Well, a lot of times you pick a character, then you change your mind. So I haven't destroyed it yet because I wanna have some logic to go back and forth and destroy them both when the game loads, but that's something for another episode. So just go ahead and create your level select widget, add it to the viewport and you're good to go. So if we go back to here, you can't click on the button through the mannequin or the mutant. You have to actually click the outside. Or again, use your keyboard and that's fine. But if you wanted to click on it and be the whole block, which I'd recommend because honestly that's a lot better than this current system. The reason for this is you might want to have a button that's a different size than your image and you don't necessarily want to play around with trying to have this image scale to the button properly. You might not want to have it over the whole button because some buttons, for example, if you're doing like a controller selection screen or like a side selection screen, the button is kind of either something you have invisible or it's not really a button inherently. It's more like each character, or excuse me, each player chooses their side and then it progresses your screen. So you don't necessarily wanna have buttons that are always visible. So what I'd recommend is if you do have a button that's visible and or in a space that you want to make the player be able to click on even if it's not visible, but you want an image that is not tied to that button, you can go ahead and go to the image that you selected uh, and put over the button, as you see here, like my mannequin and mutant profile pictures, go to your details box in your designer, all the way down to behavior, and invisibility do non-hit testable. You can either do self and all children or self only. It kind of just depends on what you have set up, if you have children of this item or not. I don't right now, but I just did self and all children because I know nothing that's going to be a child of this picture is something that should block me from clicking on this button behind it. So you can see I've done that for all of these now, including level select. I've done non-hit testable. So now when I launch the game, I will be able to actually click on anywhere in the box. And you can see this is a lot smoother. So I can click on the mannequin and on the level and now I'm here. Or I could go in, click on the mutant, and on this level, and now I'm here. So now that image isn't in your way all gross and ugly, and you can't actually progress the game in any way. So there you go, guys. That's how you make a functional level select and character select screen that is honestly pretty successful. Like, you could pretty much use this and modify it any way you want, and you wouldn't have to change a lot of the functionality. In the next week's episode, we might be doing a Super Smash Brothers character select screen where you actually pick up like the coin and go place it on an object. That one's going to be a lot more complex, but I think that will be a pretty fun one. So we'll probably do that for next week. Thank you all for coming by, checking out the video. Hopefully it helps you. Um, if it did, I really appreciate it. If you would subscribe, it's the most important thing you can do to help me out as a creator. And also it lets me know that you're interested in this type of video. More importantly than that though, uh, if you do have issues in the video or following anything that I said or if something I said just didn't make sense but you got it to work and you want more clarification, you can go ahead and join our Discord. For whatever reason, I can't put it in the iCard, but it is in the description below. You just find the Discord, uh, tag them in the description and there's a link. If you go ahead and join the Discord, we have a programmer chat channel where everyone can talk and solve problems and we have a lot of people in there, I think we're up to like 40 people now, who are very helpful and actually talk to other people and solve their issues. 
when I am not there. So you have a nice little community of people who can help out if this didn't make sense or if you just want help going forward with programming. So let me know what you guys want to see in the next one, or it doesn't have to be the fighting game, it can be any genre. And lastly, guys, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for everyone who came and followed and subbed to us on Twitch. I know a lot of you actually were from YouTube, and I really appreciate having you guys there. This is something new to us, so we're just getting set up. Uh, so for us, it was very exciting for you guys to come by and support us. And it just feels great having a community that goes from YouTube, Discord, and Twitch. So if you would like to be a part of that, like I said, join the Discord. You can follow us on Twitch right here. It's uh, Twitch TV slash on the road 27. And yeah, that's all I got for today, guys. So if you enjoyed this episode, please let me know what you're interested in for the next one. That way I can get started. And we will be doing the Super Smash Brothers character select screen in the next episode. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming by. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye, everyone.